Are you sitting here again today? Megan? Yes. Um, we're going to talk through Susan's latest list of demands. Gold-plated cutlery, a rainbow, and let's not forget the flotilla of flowers. Why not send Megan a few? Roses? Maybe I will. She got engaged yesterday. Do you want me to have him killed? That's normally my department, so uh, leave it to the professional. All right. You're running a bit late for school, aren't you? Don't tell me you've lost that watch I got you already. Uh, you take that outside. Thanks. You said you wanted to hang out today. I said I'd pick you up after school, and you know it. Just ring in. Say I'm ill. I'm gonna get Graham to drive you back. Yeah, right, and then fob me off with another excuse later. Don't be stupid. Why would I do that? Cos you like everyone else. Tell me we're gonna do something together and then let me down. Don't be ridiculous. Maybe you are using me to get back at Mum. No, oh, please, I've got us those bikes. We can go wherever you want, just later. All right. Tip to all the places that you used to hang out with Dad when you were younger. Look, um, I can't. I'd love to. I just... Just what? Don't bother. Mum's right. You're a user and you don't give a stuff about me. Noah. It's not like that. Noah, come back. Cockies. You're not going with them. But he's just cycled off. Hey, where's Mum? Oh, you tell me. Chaz were thinking of putting reward posters up, but uh, she's not sure she wants her back. <laughs> she went out earlier, apparently, dropping Noah off at school, and then she's probably going off on one of her spend-ups again. Hey, you don't think she's got a problem, do you? Shopping addiction. Does Marlon have any conspiracy theories of his own? He reckons if she weren't so smitten with Vanessa, she'd probably have a married man on the go. <sighs> Chaz is upstairs in bed, poorly. Marlon's got a coach party in at dinner time, so I've stepped into the breach to open up. I reckon Charity forgets her phone on purpose so they can't track her down. Mm. Who's calling? They'll leave a voicemail. Don't worry. Well, I do worry. Hello. It's Charity Dingle speaking. Is Noah OK? Unexplained absences. Right, well, no, I don't have a letter now, but um, Noah is off ill today, so... You seriously want to try and find us? Right, well, that won't be necessary, because from now on, there'll be no more unexplained time off. OK. Thank you. Bye. She is going to go nuclear if he's up there again. Let's go find him. Don't you think you should stay away from Joe? Let your mum handle it. No, I'm going to put a stop to this. Noah! 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 Oh, please come in. Where is he? I don't know. Don't give me that. It's your job to know. Joe's away in business. Joe's with Noah. The school rang Mum. Luckily, I picked up. They're threatening to find her because he's been bunking off. Yeah, you should look worried, because when she finds out, she's going to blame Joe. And how bad does it look? A grown man taking a kid out of school. It's not like that, and you know it. Yeah, I do. But that is exactly how she's going to sell it to the police. They're mountain biking in the woods. The kids from Connelton used to come up here in the summer holidays and jump off. You jump from here? Me? No. Too scared? Too sensible. For the record, mate, I'm not using you. Then why wouldn't you take me to the places that you and Dad went? I know it hurts, thinking about him, but... I just want to know what it was really like. I can't tell you about Dad, because I didn't know him either. But you live with him? 
He brought you up. No, he didn't. Truth is, he was always just too busy. His work was clearly far more important to him than me. The dad that I bragged to all the kids at school about, the one that loved me and took me on all these cool adventures in the woods on my bike, didn't exist. I made him up. A fantasy dad, because my real dad, he didn't want to know me. So I can't take to the places we hung out, because there aren't any. But if he was so rubbish and he didn't care, why would you ruin Debbie's life for him? about Debbie. I barely know her. She was just collateral damage. I was angry. Looking for someone to blame for Dad's death. I just used Debbie to get back a charity. But why? My mum never killed him. Yeah, I know that. But I was a messed up kid. Alone here in boarding school, no family in England, no one's talked to about it. I just had to convince myself that charity was the reason that I never got to know my dad or get a chance to fix our relationship. But it was dad that was the problem. And now I've just followed in his footsteps, behaved appallingly, just like he did, and hurt Debbie. All I could think about was revenge. You know, I told myself I had to hate Debbie just as much as I hate charity. I had to see her as this, this gold-digging prostitute. My feelings were just shut down for so long, I didn't think I'd actually fall for her. And now, my biggest fear is that I've blown it. Lost Debbie. Only woman I ever loved. And for what? Some bloke who I didn't really know. And I'm sorry to have to say all this, it's hard to come to terms with it myself, let alone say it out loud. But I've realised that I am not him. I've got no agenda. You are my little brother, and you're the closest family I've got. And I do want to get to know you and hang out, or whatever. People told me that were horrible. I never wanted to believe them, though. It's like losing Debbie for good isn't the only thing that you're scared of. I had this motto in my old school. Semper begendum, sina timore. Always moving forward without fear. Save you. Oh my God, don't do that. <laughs> I'm not afraid of the height. I just have a healthy respect for long falls into water. You need to get over it. Yeah, well, not today. Come on, race you home. I bet you this chocolate bar that you'll never jump off there. I need an ambulance. 
I'm at a quarry near home farm and my brother jumped in the water. He's, he's not moving. Please hurry. Uh, uh, it's OK. Uh, she got him out. Debs, they want to know if he's breathing. No, he's not. Just tell him to hurry up. She says he's not. What do we do? God. They said, can you do CPR? <laughs> yeah. She's doing it now. How long's the ambulance going to be? Yeah, she did it. She did it. He's breathing. Give me your jacket now. Come on! How long before you got him breathing again? I don't know. Can't have been long. He's not going to die, is he? She administered CPR, but he's got a weak pulse, bradycardic, very cold, in shock, and it looks like he's had a blow to the head. You called his next of kin, love? Yeah, he's going to meet you at the hospital. But I'm his next of kin. I'm his little brother. Yeah, he's talking about an adult now. Come on, we need to follow him. No, I'm getting you home. But Joe needs us. Well, he's got Graham. But what if he dies? You're wrong about him, you know. There's so much that you don't know. And now, I might never get to know him properly because he might die and it'll be my fault. I can't believe how reckless he was. I mean, who jumps off a quarry? Well, that's where showing off gets you. A and E. And how could you go behind my back and see that bit of scum again? Right, we really need to get back to the pub. You gonna be all right? Mm, yeah. Well, I'll speak to you later. Just keep warm. In your own time. We should be at the hospital with Joe. Well, I've told you, it's best that we stay away. For who? You? You might have saved his life but he could still die. Well, he will if I've got anything to do with it. You and Debs could have been killed. Oh, don't worry, he'll survive like the cockroach that he is. Thanks to you. I'm sorry, what did you want me to do? I was let him drown. <sighs> I suppose he is your big brother. Babe, come on, let's get you home and then we'll put a call into the hospital and we'll see how he's doing, all right? Thanks, Mum. That's all right, babe. Right, we'll ring you in a bit. You rest up, OK?